I'm so excited to move and to have well, this. This doesn't have to be the podcast, but like to create my own space. Spoiler alert: Maggie's moving, and and like for it to be easier than what it is right now. It's not easy. No, because I. Well, to be fair, I guess it probably won't be super duper easy anyways, just because my podcast setup, uh, all the same materials are required for audition setup, um, but in different areas. And so it's a lot of moving. It's a lot of, yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited to kind of like curate my own space. I've been going through, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I guess we're talking about the fact that I'm moving, <laughs> <laughs> but I've been going through Pinterest boards on Pinterest boards and I've been like exchanging with my roommate and I because I'm gonna have a roommate uh and finally I texted Blythe because Blythe is like one of the most cool just like her closet's incredible I love her style I think she's great and so I just texted her or I I talked to her when I saw her and I was like is there any chance that you have like some Pinterest boards of home inspiration and she sent it to me and there's like kitchen inspiration, bathroom inspiration, closet inspiration, <laughs> like every single bit. And so I sent them to my roommate and we both were like, this is amazing. That's <laughs> awesome. Mine, my Pinterest boards, all steampunk. <laughs> yeah. Mine, mine are like funky, like weird, but also very classic stuff. Nice. It's very interesting. Mine are non-existent, but if yeah. I did have them, he doesn't know what it is. They would involve probably outdoor scenes and activities and drum rooms, like music rooms and a workout gym. I don't know. Yeah, so, Th- those are it's great. A great things. concept. <laughs> no, I'm. You know, Mom and I have um, pretty similar styles. I think. Basically, I go with whatever she wants. That's our style. <laughs> There you go. There you go. I remember. But no, that'll be cool. You haven't done that since you had a roommate in college and you and Annie kind of got into that a lot too with your designing of your room space. Yeah. I don't think. In a dorm room, you can only take it so far. Yeah. And I don't think either of us cared a ton, a ton. It was more about what we made of it. Um, But I've actually been thinking about that a lot because I've loved living alone, but I loved living with Annie so much too. And so I'm, I'm very excited for that. Um, I was talking to my roommate and I'm going to teach her how to crochet because I've been on a crochet kick. (laughs) But before I tell you more about that, how about we just get into this and roll the intro music? Okay, let's roll that intro music. Mags and Dads, wholesome chaos. Mags and Dads, wholesome chaos. Do I sound stuffy? Do I sound very stuffy? Um, A little 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 bit. I woke up sneezing today a lot. Did you hear me, honey? This morning? Yes. I, w- I could not I was stop about sneezing to call this morning. The emergency. And I got up at like the emergency? 5 a.m. I, I was about to call hospital. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 5 a.m. and I couldn't stop sneezing, but that's not why I got up. I got up to write and I, I wrote <laughs> solid for four hours. I felt so good about that. Because of the sneezing and it's all. <laughs> I finished up. chapter 12. Yes. <laughs> Only two or three, maybe more chapters to go. Um, and then, of course, I've got to go back through it and see what the heck I wrote. Yes. But no, I'm super excited about this podcast. I've got a really funny story to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourselves? Yeah. Oh, oh, great idea. Ourselves. Okay. I'll introduce myself. My name is Dan Thurman. I am Maggie's dad. I am Shay's husband. I am a motiv- motivational speaker, <laughs> author, and <laughs> yeah, I'm really good with my words. Um, no, I have a lot of fun in life and teach people cool skills and teach them how to live with greater attitudes and success. So that's what I do. Maggie. I'm Maggie is. Thurman. That's my dad and my co-host of this podcast. I, uh, You may have seen me on your For You page. I'm also an actress. I live in LA. I'm 19. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, yeah, we're all trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And then Shay is here as well in the studio. How you doing, baby? Great. I am the momager of the Wholesome Chaos family. Momager? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's the title Maggie gave me a while back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And she was gone for like a week. I missed her so much, Maggie. Mm, it's I good. know. You should be very well assured that your parents are still deeply in love. <laughs> yeah. Because when mom was gone, I did not know what to do with myself. <laughs> I w- it was just me and the dogs. They weren't very good for conversation. They were all confused They together. were confused. We were looking at each other like, what do we do? I don't know what we do. Let's just do stuff. <laughs> did but you watch a back. lot of golf? No, I didn't hardly watch any golf because Mm -hmm. when the dogs were with me, we went up to North Carolina for that period of time Mm -hmm. to get the house ready to sell. And they came back. You know, that was last week. We talked about that a good bit. Yeah. Uh, Did play some disc golf together. And then. (laughs) How'd um, they do? 
they they just walk around and smell stuff. Did they score? And Spencer was rolling a couple times. Oh, so no. I, you know but, Spencer. But you know, Spencer, Simon rolls in stuff that stinks. Spencer like sometimes rolls in like mint, stuff that oh, smells nice. good. You know, you give him a little scrap of lemon. Spencer. You throw it on the ground, he'll roll in lemon. Spencer you does know, not speaking make Speaking of things that grow... You know what suddenly grew in our backyard is what? a disc golf um, <laughs> basket. Basket. I know. I didn't know those grew naturally because in Georgia. I, I was on the phone with dad the other day and I, I was like, what, what what are you doing right now? Like it sounded weird. And he was like, I'm taking disc golf home. <laughs> I'm taking these things yeah. home. I well, like, I figured I had five baskets at the office. I could move one or two of them home. Yeah, it, I was surprised it wasn't a new one. I said, did this come from the office or did, is this new? He goes, no, yeah. don't be crazy. Oh yeah, God. five's As enough. If. Five's enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, but it's um, it's good to have that practice time because I go out there in the back with the dogs and I throw it and I'm really liking it. Yeah. I think that's, that's going to be good. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. You know how much I, I love disc golf. <laughs> Okay, yeah, enough about that. <laughs> no, I think it's great. I just don't know why I'm so bad at throwing a Frisbee. It doesn't make sense to me. Same. And you know what? It's one of those things that I don't feel like I need to master. Just because I've but got... But see, I could teach you how to do it with just a couple simple lessons, and then you'd know. Yeah, but then I'd 100%. have less time for pickleball. I had someone... No, it takes no time. I'm, I'm, I swear, like, like, like if you gave me two minutes, I could teach you how to throw a Frisbee really well for the rest of your okay, life. Okay, see, but I, I have trust issues with that because... If you recall yeah. one time when you and I went to go film a TikTok where I threw a Frisbee at you while you backflipped and caught it, and oh, we tried yes. that for like two days. I think that's why I have like guilt over it because every time I threw it bad, uh, you had just done a backflip. And so I was like, yeah. literally all I have to do right now is throw this Frisbee straight. You had to do a backflip and catch it, and I'm the one messing up for two days. Yeah, so what was happening... So if I, I, I could do this trick where if you throw a Frisbee a little bit above my head, like two feet above my head, I can throw, jump up, do a backflip, catch it upside down, land. And it looks super cool. So I was trying to do that for a TikTok. And Maggie was trying to hit that, that, that spot above my head. And she was consistently offline, which meant I would have to like run into position, set up, and then try to pull off a backflip to make it work, which meant either I was not doing it well, or sometimes I'd be off the screen. It was <laughs> like so bad. I felt, and now we I only did it though for like three or four days. And then we were like, okay, let's so just bad. Stop this. I was like, this is, this is terrible. Um, but see anything we do to spend time together is a win for me. So I did not mind a bit. <laughs> yeah. Just you, Maggie and Advil. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, me, Maggie speaking of and Advil. Sp speaking well of together. pickleball, I was at a friend's birthday party yesterday and somebody came up to me and they said, they, they just, they said my name and I turned around. I was like, okay. Um, I didn't recognize them. However, you, you meet a lot of people out here that maybe you don't recall names. So it was actually really funny how many times I hugged someone yesterday. I was like, oh my gosh, how have you been? Cause I knew the face, but we both completely forgot each other's names, but it's oh. always comforting when you both forget each other's names. That's, that's when it's good. Mm -hmm. But, um, this girl came up to me and she was like, Maggie, I was like, oh my gosh, hi. And she said, she was like, you're friends, uh, with my friend Bobby. And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I love Bobby. And she was like, um, we're going to play pickleball together soon. Like all of us. And I was like, no way. Meanwhile, my friend whose birthday it is, we've been talking about playing pickleball. And so like literally while saying goodbye, he was like, pickleball soon. And then somebody else was like, oh wait, are you guys like the pickleball group? We're apparently like the people- <laughs> We want in. I, the people I play with dad, we have all invited so many people that when people know someone's playing pickleball, they like assume it's us. <laughs> And, That's hilarious. And we have like a network of like a hundred people who we've invited to play. And <laughs> the community pickleball courts just aren't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's awesome. Well, Maggie, um, we have a great sponsor for this, uh, this podcast. We've talked about them many times. We absolutely love this company. You've heard about them. You know them. You probably love them too. If you've ever tried them, you certainly will. This is HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers great meals to your door. 
um, ready to prepare. Basically, all the ingredients are cut, measured, portioned for you. So, And the recipes are exciting and fun and super tasty. You can pick from a number of different types of, of recipes. And you know what? HelloFresh chefs really know how to diversify your dinner menu with seasonal spring recipes like sweet heat shrimp, tempura bowls, garden spinach, ricotta ravioli, and one pot creamy lemon dill chicken soup. Pick your favorites from 50 different weekly options and skip weeks when you need to. Change your delivery date or update your preferences all in the HelloFresh app. What we love about it is that HelloFresh has given our kids both confidence in their cooking and preparation skills, which is a huge part of life. So when they were going away to college or when Maggie moved to LA and and Eddie and his girlfriend living together in Lake Tahoe, it's like, let's hook them up with some HelloFresh yeah. and get them started on their journey of preparing meals throughout their life. Because you've loved it, right, Max? Yeah. Even when what I'm realizing more and more now is when you don't have time to shop. Like some weeks you're genuinely so busy and you don't have an hour and a half to go to a grocery store. And and this, mm-hmm. you always know that you're going to have food in the house. You're not going to go hungry. You're not going to be resorting to, I know sometimes when I push back the grocery store and I don't have HelloFresh or something, it's, it's very much of a, okay, what am I going to eat? And it's never stuff that's good for me. It's like a six week old bagel that I found in my freezer. I'm like, all right, dinner, <laughs> let's go. And so it's nice to always know that you have good food nearby. Good food that turns into great meals. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes you come home with a, a dinner plan and realize you forgot a major ingredient, but HelloFresh delivers all of the ingredients and the recipe. So give it a shot if you haven't already. And if you have already, you could do it again. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 16chaos and use that code 16chaos for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash 16chaos using code 16chaos for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. So let me tell you this story, Maggie. As you know, I film my weekly coaching videos at daybreak every single week somewhere in the world. And it's cool because I'm like a week ahead now. The next one is going to come out in Chicago. Well, it's filmed in Chicago already in the can. And so I was trying to get an extra bonus one recorded this weekend. And so I went to this cool park here in our area where we live in Georgia called Freeman Mill Park. There's a huge water wheel. Uh, It's an old mill, you know, where they made stuff and milled stuff. And there's a river that runs through it. There's a waterfall there. It's like a cool, pretty location, good for video. And so I I go there, I'm all ready to go, kind of mic'd up, uh, wearing a a, a wireless uh, transmitter microphone. And I'd shot my first part of the script. And then as I am wont to do, I shoot some B-roll shots and pretty shots of the fountain and all this kind of stuff. And I decided I was going to go up on top where the waterfall is. And it's pretty high waterfall. It's like 20 feet in the air and do a handstand uh, above the waterfall. And I wanted to get to the other side of it. So I'm kind of stacked right above the waterfall. And it's, there's this long stone wall. So I'm walking along the stone wall trying to figure out how am I going to get to the other side of this waterfall? And to the right of me, it's just dirt right? So the water's coming in on the left side to the right. It's just like ground. And I decided to, to like go upstream and try to cross that way. And so I just casually leap off the wall to the ground and immediately realize it's not ground. It's water, still deep water that's covered with leaves and pollen dust and like tree debris. And it looks like ground, but I immediately sink through the surface all the way above my head. Like it's <gasps> deep and like, like my legs buckled and go completely underwater. No. And it was the weirdest sensation. Like I did not even know what was happening for like a second. Literally I'm coming out of the water and it's hilarious. Cause I, we didn't get that on video cause the camera <laughs> was trained for the waterfall and I wasn't there yet, but I have the audio of it. And you literally hear this moment where it's like, I'm breathing heavy and I'm, you know, circumnavigating the area. And then it suddenly goes bloop, 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 bloop. And you, Did you hear the like static of oh it? My gosh. And then the, the first thing that happens when I resurface is I laugh. It's like you could basically hear it through this microphone, which still works, by the way, because I went back the next day and I redid it. But, um, you know, and then I just go, oh, my goodness. Or, oh, my gosh, I think I said. But I was very proud of myself for not for handling it with a laugh and without, like, you know, saying bad words. But it was a very funny moment. I come home, came home defeated and soaking wet. Mom was like, that was fast. I was like, no. 
But you, you had a, a, a glimmer of hope going, that's going to be great for the podcast. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. And that's the beauty in, in this world of life that we live in is like when something goes wrong, it's like, that's some content. A baby pukes on you on a plane. You're like, yes. That's some content. You jump in some water fully clothed. Content. It's terrifying and hilarious. Oh content, my gosh. Content, baby. Have you ever had a moment like that where you're like not sure what's going on? Like reality just suddenly seems all twisted? Like a surprise party. It's that kind of like, <laughs> well, hey, where's the party? And all of a sudden you realize, oh, everybody's looking at me. It's my surprise. I feel that way when I wake up. A lot of the times <laughs> when I'm like really tired and I wake up, I literally, this happened yesterday because I got up early, early, like not that early, but I got up earlier than usual to go grab a friend for breakfast and I woke up. And my first thought, I got like angry. I was like, who the heck woke me up? Like, why am I awake right now? And then I <laughs> I grabbed my phone and I, you know this, I always set alarms with like titles. That's why I have thousands of alarms. And it would say like, go get Alyssa for breakfast. And I'm like, oh, that's why. <laughs> but I literally, my first thought is like, something's wrong. Why am I like, <laughs> like what's happening? And it takes me a second to calibrate and be like, I'm in my house. <laughs> I I have plans for the day. I have to go do it. Um, but mom, you were talking about that feeling in a surprise party. Yeah. As you guys know, my birthday is next month. I'm turning 20. What the heck yep. is that? I'm, I'm excited. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm confused. Um, but I had an idea. You're coming home. I am coming home. But before I come home, I'm going to do a little birthday celebration here with my friends. Um, and I had a idea that I wanted to do. And so mm. far, I only have like five people who are willing to come, which makes me sad. And I might have to change, but I want y'all's feedback on what you think this is. Um, so recently, you guys know, I went to the Groundlings Improv Show. I'm going to a different one this week. Um, but... Me and a few of my friends, we've been talking for a long time about how we like think stand up is really obviously stand up's different than improv, but there's levels of improv and stand up. Sure. Um, and we think it's so fun and we think we should all just write it for the fun of it, even though it's probably not going to be very good. Um, and so I had an idea that for my birthday, um, I want to do a party called Stand Up or Get Out. And you're required <laughs> to do at least two minutes of stand up in order to stay at the party. I think that's a great wow. idea. Wow, two minutes is a very long time. It's not. Especially if you're on fire. It's, okay, well. <laughs> but so it doesn't have to be good, though. It could be it just so has to terrible. Be like, it could just be one one really well-told story. Exactly. Because just tell a that's funny what story. Impl- really good uh, stand-up is, is usually unfolding some scenario in such a hilarious way. Yeah. And it comes from the personality. I think you'd be brilliant at it. Um, and I'm sure your friends too, because you've got a lot of funny friends. And and people were really stressed out about the idea of stand up. So I was like, okay, what if I made it a roast? Because then everyone has like a common thought. But then I was like, I don't want to get roasted on my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that could go bad. I, you don't I did a roast that. for Schwartz uh, for his like 50th. And I was so busy preparing the party and, and the lineup of all of the, our friends who are hilarious improv actors and professional actors that I forgot to write my piece. And I'm like, oh, crap, you know, and now I'm going up against some really big hitters. And so I literally wrote it two days before and I was pretty proud of it. But it was um, good. It came together at the last second. But I did. It was really funny. It was very funny, but it was kind funny. They were so funny that they weren't. But John, John likes that kind of humor. I don't think that would be a good idea for Maggie. Well, I've done roasts before in high school. Did I ever tell you guys about this? I no. think so. Roasting yeah, friends? I think in high school, getting yourself roasted? Yeah. Well, okay. So in high school, if you were a theater kid, um, you most likely went to this thing called Thezcon, which is like a giant a giant thespian festival. Um, and Thespians are actors. For those of you who don't know, that's what that term means. Yes. Um, and, and I am one too. <laughs> we would take buses and the buses were kind of small because I went to a small school. And so we had kind of notoriously like the underclassmen and the upperclassmen bus just because like you'd sit with your friends and stuff like that. And on the way back, we'd always be driving pretty late at night. Um, We would do these awards 
Oh my gosh, am I going to get in trouble for talking about this? No, it's been years. Um, <laughs> but we did these things called the Oreo Awards. And you, we would essentially, we'd make a Walmart stop and we'd get Oreos. And we, Aiden usually would like give them out to different people. He was great at running this. Um, and the Oreo <laughs> Award would be for different things and everyone would get one. Um, but before the Oreo Awards, we would do a roast. And you would get paired with someone, and you would roast each other, and then the bus would vote on who did a better job. They'd move forward. The next people would roast each other up until we had a winner. Y'all, it was so mean. It was so mean. Like, we, we oh did God. not hold back. And, and afterwards we were all like, oh, all in good fun, but we all just didn't feel great inside. And so yeah, we, it's hard to take that back. Kids can be so cruel. Well, too. we were all good friends though. And like, none of us were like. Were there ever any repercussions of people like not being able to get over it? No, Something that was no, 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 no. Afterwards we like went around and said how much we loved each other and we were all like crying. Um, but <laughs> I... I don't think I was particularly hurt by the roast. I just felt bad about hurting other people. Mm -hmm. You don't know really how bad you're hurting somebody because they can just go, oh, no, that's funny. And then they, they're in therapy for 30 years. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, you know me, I, I don't like to go there. Yeah, I don't generally like roasts speaking. unless they're really funny and they're that's you know, the thing. clever. If it's funny and clever, but if it's, if it's mediocre and just mean. You know what's really bad is when you say something like sarcastic and roasting somebody via text because then they, they can't interpret that it's actually a joke. They, there's no tone. <clears throat> I've done that a couple of times, like texted a good friend, something that's kind of like snarky. And I go back and read it and it's like, man, that just sounds mean. I, and I have to apologize and <laughs> I feel bad about it. I get really okay, guilty about you. those things. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. No, but I do like the the comedy idea. <laughs> I would tell the story about me jumping into the water and reality going wrong, and I'd make it much funnier. I would tell, I'd yeah, like, build it up more. Build it up. I yeah. might even take it into a dark, darker place. Like, I could, I could re talk about how, like, you know, one of the things I thought about was when I, what actually happened to me was the same thing that happened to those squirrels when our oh, pool no. algaed over. No. And we had all those squirrels jump in. Like, yeah, I mean, it was... Terrible. Only happened one time, but we got a layer of algae on top of our pool, and these squirrels had their reality shifted uh, very quickly and suddenly, and were unable to get out, unfortunately. What like, if yeah, I that do wasn't funny. That was that wouldn't be friends funny, no, stand up in LA, and then when I come home, we do family stand up, but it's like it, it's extended family. So, like, grandma gets two minutes, grandpa gets two minutes, everyone gets two minutes. You yeah, could just tell it. jokes or write jokes. You could go bowling. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You, you can give people an option. They can either be do the stand up or get out, or maybe it's not stand up or get out. It's stand up or pay up. Ooh, I like, like that. Like so, either they they can. I just like here's your five dollars. <laughs> yeah, either they've got to donate twenty bucks to the party fund, or they've got or they can do tw uh, two minutes of material, something like that. <laughs> two minutes is a lot. I'm telling you. Two minutes is not that much. <clears throat> yeah. Get right and then get back to us on it. We'd like to hear it on the podcast. I have. I've written stand up. Oops. Hit the mic. My bad. <laughs> it's funny how you mentioned Alyssa because we actually have a question from Alyssa for this, this week's podcast. Different Alyssa. Um, different Alyssa. <laughs> most likely. Um, most yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd be willing to say that. <laughs> do you want that question now? Sure. Okay. How do I, this is from Alyssa. And she says, how do, or she asks, how do I smile and keep a positive attitude during a hard season? I thought that's a really good question. How do you smile and keep a positive attitude during a hard season? Or can you? Is how, it hard sometimes? How do you and, smile and keep a positive attitude during a hard season? Like this? <laughs> that's crazy because I do it like this. <laughs> Maggie's smiling. My dad's smiling. No, I mean, it's... <laughs> I, just the phrase, hard, the phrase hard season. We don't want to make any assumptions about what that means. I mean, it could be loneliness. It could be physical pain or mental Or it could be distress. tragedy. What's that? It could be family tragedy or yeah, friend, family you know, tragedy. tragedy in your, in your close Financial. Circle. Like there's so many ways. But I mean, I, the thing about... 
Go Sorry, ahead. go ahead. I completely cut you off. No, I was going to just say like the thing about being a human being is life is struggle yeah. and hard seasons just are part of it. Yeah, I think it's less about like just being able to smile through it and more about being able to find joy in little moments, like most likely not related to the situation because I don't want to feel like every situation has an upside because I do not know what you're going through. Um, but I, I think it's less about like coming off as happy and genuinely like just finding things that are going to lighten it a little bit. Because if, if, if you're grieving, if, if something like that, I do think that like grieving processes are important and feeling what you're feeling is important, but having a, something to combat that as well, to shed some light into it, to make you laugh a little, to like bring that smile about, I do think finding those things is really crucial and really helpful in those hard times. Yeah. You know, and I also feel like life and struggle and difficulty has a sense of reality and grit to it and pain. And pain is so real, right? It's like everybody, pain is the hum human experience. It's universal. And what's interesting about pain, physical pain or mental anguish, is it's totally subjective. Like, have you ever thought about, like, my version of green might be different than your version of green because we, we both see a color and we agree, like, that's green, but I have no idea exactly what it is you're seeing and whether yeah. it jibes with my version. And pain is sort of the same way. It's like um, one thing you know for sure is that everybody feels it. And, um, it, and theirs is very personal. Theirs is very real and theirs is very deep. But then on some level, I think I kind of see life as like this thing we're living, this human experience, is not all there is. I just believe that. I, I believe that there is a, uh, a a divine world. I believe that there is a higher purpose and life after this. And I believe that um, we can rise above these situations and realize like this is a test or this is a a trial. Life, this journey, you get one chance to do your best and to create some levity along the way for yourself and for others. It's a big part of it. You remember a few years ago, uh, Mark Sharon Brock, uh, speaker friend of ours, very funny guy, brilliant. Yeah. Um, and he talked about going through a difficult time and people would say, hey, how you doing, Mark? And he'd say, great. And then to himself, he'd say, full. I'm grateful. Mm. And he would think about, you know, all the things that he is grateful for, even though he was in a really difficult season uh, during that time. And I just thought, wow, that's so, so brilliant. Not always easy to do, but if you can, if you can get there, if you can think about the things that you are grateful for and just, yeah, try to be, um, put on that happy smile. It's, I've been through quite a few tragedies in my life. And I often felt, found myself trying to comfort the other people because like, you know, when I was in high school and I lost several family members and my friends came to see me in the hospital and I know these guys are 17 year old guys, you know, high schoolers, and they're coming to see me to give me comfort. And they, I could see the terror in their eyes. They didn't know what to say. They didn't know how to talk to me you know, how to comfort me. And so I made jokes. I was like, you know, just our normal selves. And they were, you could literally see the relief in their eyes. And then we, they hung out and just, I was so grateful that they showed up to just, you know, Hey, we care about you. We don't know what we're doing, but, but we're here for you. And so sometimes, um, bringing the joy starts the party with, with your friends and may, and then you, you can find more joy. So hopefully you can find your way through it and then build on that, the positive. Yeah. Wow, babe. That's so powerful. Oh my gosh. You're so amazing and strong. Um, I have fortunately not been as through as much tragedy as you have in your life, but it's always amazed me how you can bring love of others and seek to help people. I mean, that's a very practical thing to do, right? Is you say, all right, I'm not having a good time, so who can I help? Yeah. 
uh, I mean, not even if it's not even a tragic situation, but just a ordinary hard season, um, helping others and finding the things that do make you happy and doing more of that. Yeah. yeah. Go see a funny movie. That Nick Cage movie. Is that funny? I, don't, <laughs> I haven't seen it. Yet. It was it was less funny the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> I make a TikTok. Make a TikTok. Crochet. I'm I'm currently crocheting yeah. a bathing suit. Let me tell you, last night. <laughs> what? Yeah. That does not sound like a good idea. No, because there's these crochet bathing to suits. To be worn in public? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how good it goes. Um <laughs> but uh and how well it covers. There's these Well, uh, you you put it into a lining. No, oh, I'm not okay. gonna do that. But there's these crochet bathing suits. I probably couldn't <laughs> swim in it, but there's these crochet bathing suits <laughs> online, and they're, like, so expensive. They're, like, $200, but I love them. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll make it. And last night, last night, I was at a friend's house. We had gone out to dinner with her dad because her dad was in town, and we wanted to meet her family. I think it's so funny how excited we get when people's parents come in town. And we're like, can we hang out? Can we meet them, please? <laughs> But <laughs> you guys are so weird. <laughs> I know. But afterwards, I um, a few of us, we just like went back to my friend's house and three of us were just crocheting on the couch while watching TV for like an hour. And I was like, guys, this is what I've been longing for. This brings me so much <laughs> joy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful. And so you're doing like a lesson with your friends? Teaching everybody how to crochet? Yeah, well, one of them is really good. And then I was I was teaching Alyssa how to make a bucket hat. Um, and so it was a really fun time. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. So speaking of TikToks, I may get banned from TikTok. Why? Well, apparently I've been flouting the system and they've had enough of me. It's very confusing. What? I got an announcement. I, I violated another community guidelines situation, but normally when, when that happens, and it's it's weird. Do you remember that video I posted like just like three days ago of me doing the very introductory lesson on unicycling? Yeah. And it was like, this is a unicycle. This is how you balance it. This is where you put your shift, your your weight shift. This is where you put your feet. And you know, like it was like a really tight two minute video of how to ride it safely, including like how to fall and how to get off properly. Well, that video was up for a little bit and then it just, it didn't get pulled down, but it stopped, you know, mm -hmm. like what I mean? Like, like they shadow banned it for a while. Under review, and yeah. And then, yeah. And then the next morning I got, um, my, my account had a red flag, like it said account warning, which I'd never seen before. And it basically said, if you get one more violation, then your account will be restricted or removed. Oh my gosh. And, 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 and basically, and it, and it flagged that particular video, which now has since gone back online. And it didn't tell me anything like, oh, sorry, we've checked this out. But, but it went back up again. But I th I th what I think it is, is two things. I looked at the community, community guidelines and it has to do with dangerous activity mm -hmm. and specifically giving instruction oh. for dangerous activities. Like if you're teaching people how to do something that they perceive as dangerous. So riding so, a bike right, is I, okay, but a one wheel bike is not. Or skateboarding or parkour or like, like there's just so much else on TikTok that is so much more dangerous. I mean, don't you think? Yeah. Do you think unicycling is dangerous? Um, I think you can hurt yourself doing practically anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, that's tough, though. Um, but if if that does happen to progress, I'm sure we can we can talk to them. Um, and helmet. If, if you, you had, had a helmet, helmet on, it probably would have been okay. No, yeah. <laughs> helmets tank my views. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really sad. I was like, so y'all want me to get hurt? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so weird. Um, I mean, they're, they're not necessary unless you're doing like mountain trails and things like that because that's the first thing you learn is how to catch your feet. Like if you're coming off, you land on your feet. You drop the unicycle. It's yeah, not, that and how to tell if something is actually ground or if it's a, <laughs> a lake. <laughs> 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 that would have been funnier if I unicycled right into the water. Oh no! Thinking it was water, I think it was it was ground. <laughs> so remember, <clears throat> remember when Spencer? Actually, I think it was Mom and I outside, and Spencer ran down towards the pond. This was years ago. He ran up to it, 
And he just, he jumped in. And then he immediately got out and like ran away. But mom, do you remember like this? he forgot it was a pound. I think I remember you saying it. I don't recall seeing it. Um, I'm, so one of you happened. was there with me because we were like, what just, like he sure just ran off. He's been in that backyard hundreds of times. Yeah. <laughs> no one sits a well, I'm sure those squirrels were pretty familiar with the backyard too. They oh were my like, gosh. Oh. But yeah, he was not happy. He just ran in and then he got out like, what was that? <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, that's hilarious. We'll ask Spencer what he thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, after I we think finish this call. When that happens, the dogs get so embarrassed. Yeah. I feel that way when we like carry Simon up the stairs. I feel like he gets embarrassed. I know, but, but I think he appreciates it. But Spencer, you can carry anywhere. And he was like, yep. <laughs> yeah, you're carrying me. <laughs> well, yeah, Simon's a border collie. So he's a he's about 35, 40 pounds, but he's got, you know, bad joints. And so it really takes him a long time to get up the stairs. He's like one step, one direction. Then he turns the other way and zigzags all the way up. Um, so we carry him up the stairs at night sometimes. But he doesn't. It doesn't seem to bother him when we go play disc golf. He walks for miles, and he yeah, loves he's not it. Doing stairs, but then, well, actually, there were a lot of stairs yesterday on the golf course. We played a different course, and they had all mm. these different levels and stairs and whatnot. But he, um, he did great. I do think it wipes him out. And I yeah, think about does. that, that pain <laughs> question. Like you know, everybody's pain is subjective. Well, animals yeah. are in pain as much or more than we are, right? Probably. They don't. T- they don't even take Advil. Yeah, so, I think. I think uh, it's kind of like, you know, when like you could be in pain, but you really want to, I don't know, say go pickleball or something. And so your (laughs) pain becomes lessened at the time because you're so hyper focused on something you want to do. And then afterwards you're like, ah, crap, I do not feel good. Mm -hmm. Could be something like that. Yeah. Yeah. When you're sedentary, all the pain comes rushing back. But when you're in motion, it subsides yeah yeah I, there's a lot of pain i just live with now yep my toes and my <laughs> finger and that's so sad just part of life but you're right when adrenaline kicks in or i'm on stage it's just not that big a deal yeah well, what else is going on so you mentioned groundlings mm-hmm. which is the comedy improv group mm-hmm. and that you're going back mm-hmm. and that you may in fact be going there to take some classes is that right yeah so here's the interesting thing i've been talking to my friend who's done it i'm so scared because it's so like just iconic, I guess. Um, but I do think it like it is important and I think it's going to push me and embarrass me in like all the best ways. Um, I agree. Yeah. But uh, th- apparently you – I'm not exactly sure how it works, but you have to audition after a certain point for the class, like to even be in it. And you only get like five – or. I think it might be like three auditions or something. And then if you don't pass, you can't come back. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, for how long? And somebody said, they're like, I think like five years. And I was like, so like five years and after you book some stuff, then they're like, oh, you can come back. <laughs> I was like, that's so intense. Well, I'm sure that's to weed out the people that are really, this yeah. is not their calling because it <laughs> brings down the the humor I loved loved doing improv I did comedy sports um, and a lot of improv acting uh, early on and oh man I loved it. it and especially when you're with really funny people it's it was really about the fun I feel like yeah. you've been practicing that with the, your friend group oh my like gosh you guys do improv with each other naturally that's the thing we have so many bits oh my gosh Mitch and I. It might have been yesterday because we had like seen Groundlings and we're going again this week and then we're going to take classes. So it's like really exciting. We keep. He's, he's going to do it with you, Mitches? Yeah, a few of us are. Um, he, we oh, keep joking like, okay, someone give us like a task that we can do right now. And we like, <laughs> we, as a joke to one of our friends who wasn't there at the show, we just started doing the exact bits from the show. <laughs> and and he he was like, oh, this is actually kind of good. And then he walked away. <laughs> but Mitch and I were still going. And we like, I stopped because I was like, this just feels humiliating to be doing improv without an audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to practice it like everything else. I mean, it, you will practice improv without an audience. Yeah, but as a friend. Um, and group- a lot of it isn't funny, but it doesn't necessarily have to be 
funny to be successful improv. I mean, yeah. that's not true. Right. If well, it's comedy if it's improv, it should be funny. driven. If you've got a right. brilliant character, you can be doing the most mundane thing and it kills because, you know, like, uh, uh, um, who am I thinking of? Adam Sandler. Sandler. Yeah. Oh, my God. He had so many brilliant characters um, that he's done over the years. Hubie Halloween. I... Yeah, well, that's yeah. a good one. I love yeah. you. I, I did a, I, I took an improv class after graduation from, from the Alliance Theater School. And I loved it very much. And I got to the place where, you know how it is when you're, you're, you're trying to contribute something, you're like, okay, I just thought of something, now I'm going to do it, mm-hmm. right? There's that thought that precedes the, the response. Mm-hmm. Well, you get to a point where you don't think first, you just respond mm. And you surprise yourself with how you're responding. I mean, that's the nature of people who are really good at improv. Um, but you're, I think you're going to be amazing at it, Maggie. I know you will. I love, I, like, I truly, truly love all the bits my friends and I do. And we, like, genuinely... What do you mean bits? What kind of bits do you do with friends? We do... Oh, it's so hard to explain. It's just, like, bits. Like, we, we just have little different bits we'll do. Um... And it's so, so funny, but it's kind of similar in my mind to stand up on a page versus stand up performance. So different. You can write something funny. If your delivery is off, then like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's not funny. And I feel like it's, it's like so safe in our friend group. Actually, if you're not funny, like if you say a joke that's not funny, we'll usually call each other out on it and be like, not your best. (laughs) 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 Not, Not your best joke. <laughs> um, but it's, don't you think though that a lot of that has to do with confidence? Like if you present something in the right confident way, your confidence in and of itself makes it more believable. It's like they thought that was funny, so clearly I I should too. You know what yeah, I mean? Maybe. Um, I do think there is still a level of it being funny <laughs> that is important. I think improv comedy is like like pickleball. You know, it's like hitting the sh- hitting it back and forth so fast. You're reacting, right? Uh huh. And if you're confident, and if you're in that zone where you're playing super well and playing super great, it just flows, man, and it feels awesome. Like you're one with your partner. Yes, and yes, and I remember that from improv yes. as a kid. That's right. Yes, and you're also trying to beat your partner, which is not the same no, as improv. Exactly. Don't. <laughs> Yeah, in but improv, you're trying to make your partner support. succeed. Yes. Support. When yeah. you guys are out here next, I think we should definitely go to a Groundlings show. Awesome. Date. That's a good, that's a good one. Or I should have said bet. Isn't bet. that the right thing to say? You should have said yes and. <laughs> yes and we'll go to dinner afterward. Woo. Let's go. Actually, it'll be pretty late. Maybe dinner before. Sounds good to me. Before we go, I want to tell you, I got to see the most amazing air show while playing golf this week. You know how you see planes fly upside down in the air and like trails out of there and doing loops and spins and all this kind of stuff? Yeah, I'd never seen this before. I've been playing this tournament at Chateau Lawn Golf Course for many years. It's for the Angel Flight uh, Organization. And that's a great charitable group, like nonprofit, where they match pilots who have aircraft with people who are in medical need for transportation, like to go get their treatments or to go get their medicines filled or to visit doctors and things like this. And so it's like this really great organization where they match pilots with patients or people who need Mm -hmm. it, not like for life-saving emergency procedures. That's a whole different thing. But this is just like regular routine stuff. So for many years, I've been going with my buddies, Lee and Johnny Aller and other, other people involved, John Redman, and this year, they some of the pilots who are with the organization were doing acrobatics in the planes with smoke and all this kind of stuff while we're playing golf. It was the coolest experience. That's so Man. cool. Yeah. I love that stuff. That's wild. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted, wanted to give them a shout out. If you're familiar with Angel Flight or if you're looking for a great cause to support, that's certainly one of them. And uh, there are many others. A lot of people doing good in the world. Very cool. So. So this week, you go out there and do some good in the world in a small way with the people you love, in your family, for sure. Tell those you love that you love them. I love you, honey. Love you, honey. I love you, Maggie. I love you, Dad. Yeah. And we love you very much. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you would... <laughs> I, went, I love you, and you went, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh love my is gosh. good. 
<laughs> so, um, hey, if you're interested in asking us a question, go out to wholesomechaos.com. You can check out our sponsors there and more information about us as well. But anything else to wrap up the week, Max? Did you ever do any um, acrobatic flight stuff in your time as a pilot? I did. I didn't ever flip a plane upside down. Not on, on purpose. purpose. <laughs> I did. I did one time land um, in a big open pasture, which ended up being a lake. <laughs> you know, it looked from the air. It looked totally like the ground, though. No, that didn't happen. Thank God. But over Lake Lanier, um, what they had us doing in order to get your private pilot's license, you have to stall out the airplane completely. Like like you're you're just basically flying straight up until the airplane won't fly anymore. It stalls out and it starts to fall. And then you have to recover from a, a dive. You have to recover from a stall. Because those are the kind of things you have to do to get your license, to get your private pilot's license. So I did practice that. That's about the furthest I got in ac- aerobatics. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. I'll uh, show you sometime. We'll, we'll rent a plane and That's I'll go okay. show you. That's okay. That's so okay. Um, but. Yeah. No, you'll love it. You'll love it. And then we'll throw some Frisbees. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, I will talk to you next week. All right, Max. Have a great week. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Max and Dads. Wholesome chaos. Max and Dads. Wholesome chaos. Mom, I can crochet you a bathing suit. Um, okay. I like the kind that go uh, I like that start idea. as a turtleneck and go down to my knees. Oh, see, I don't have that much <laughs> yarn. <laughs> One time I made bomb a bathing suit out of balloon animals. I was thinking about that. <laughs> I was thinking we shouldn't say that on the podcast. You couldn't swim in it. No. She could float, float in it. If you did. <laughs> <laughs>